I, I had a patient send me an in, email once saying, Dr. Brewer, I've been a bad patient and I've failed you. I just can't take this statin. And my response was, gosh, I've been a bad doctor and I've failed you. If you don't, un I mean, if you don't understand that, that's okay. It happens. Um, <clears throat> Uh, today's uh, video is titled Statin Intolerance, Not a Myth. Um, <clears throat> before we get into where that title came from, it came from Jack, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, by the way. But just a quick uh, introduction. I'm Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack Stroke uh, Disability Prevention. And I see I've got my cord hanging over my neck again. That's my mic cord. Um, <clears throat> so, why would the Journal of the American College of Cardiology uh, publish an article titled Statin Intolerance, Not a Myth? Well, <clears throat> as we go through some of the statistics, you'll see why. Um, <clears throat> for... Uh, Actually, what they're talking about, let's just go back and, and look at a detail on this. What they're talking about is a, um, a uh, European heart journal article. It was a standards statement from the um, EAS, I think, European Atherosclerosis Society, where basically they're saying, yes, statin intolerance does occur. Here's actually the, uh, the article by the EAS, European uh, Heart Journal, and it's the uh, European Atherosclerosis Society Consensus Panel on Assessment uh, Etiology, which means cause, and Management of Statin-Associated Muscle Symptoms. So that's actually one of the things that happened here. They changed the focus from statin intolerance to two different things. One is SAMS, or statin-associated muscle symptoms. This can, happened, in the way, uh, by the way, in uh, August of 2015. So it's been out there a couple of years. Um, they created a focus on the muscle soreness or the muscle symptoms and um, avoided the term statin intolerance. Now, <clears throat> uh, SAMs, the muscle symptoms from statins, are by far the most common adverse events with statins. Up to 29% and maybe even up to a third of patients complain of muscle problems tiredness, weakness, muscle soreness, muscle stiffness, um, <clears throat> you name it, they come back with it. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, in some articles they talk about how when docs have to go through the advised consent and describe the, the negative problems with statins, which for the most part you really don't have to because most patients have heard of it and they're looking for it. Um, <clears throat> They create, that creates what's called a negative placebo uh, bias. In other words, uh, a bias that this medicine's going to hurt. If I'm taking it, it's probably going to hurt because most statins hurt. That's the, the mindset in a lot of our patients. And uh, frankly, I wasn't too far from there. I, did, I, I figured I'd, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, so I figured I would be lucky and probably not get much problem. I, th I have had a few muscle symptoms problems. Uh, I take very uh, low dose uh, Crestor, but uh, let's go on about about this uh, article. Statin intolerance, on the other hand, occurs up to fifteen percent. Uh, now, there's a strict definition of statin intolerance. It has to happen with two different statins. The intolerance symptoms that uh, occurs with biomarker abnormalities. Uh, the biomarker abnormalities resolve or decrease when you stop the statin. And the symptoms are not attributable to a pre-existing condition. For example, taking a, a uh, medication that makes 
you more susceptible to it, uh, to statin intolerance. So let's go back and look at the numbers again quickly, and this will start to give us an understanding of where the, um, a couple of places that that title might have come from. One is statin intolerance occurs in 15%. Now, 90% of those can be resolved. 10% can. So if you multiply that 10% times the 15%, this starts to get you to understand. So 1.5% of folks just cannot take a statin. That's the number that's out there in terms of that strict uh, definition of statin intolerance. Let's go back to that original number, SAMS or statin associated muscle symptoms, up to a third. So out of 100 patients, 30 of them have symptoms. One or two of them end up being totally statin intolerant. And there's a lot of things you can do. There's actually a whole standard regarding how to go through statin symptoms with a patient. And again, the vast majority of folks can end up tolerating it. Um, <clears throat> so before I show that, I'll just make a comment. So as a physician who prescribes statins, then you start thinking, you know, just emotionally, there's 30 people that tell you they're having a problem for every one that really long-term can't do it. So emotionally, uh, a lot of cardiologists maybe begin to feel like, you know what, it's usually going to, if I hear symptoms, it's uh, probably not going to be uh, true and uh, permanent intolerance. It's that whole thing, if you hear hoof beats, you think uh, horses, not zebras, unless you're in Africa on the plains and you think zebras. In other words, stimulus response, you think of the most common thing that you get with that. So cardiologists and those of us who prescribe statins tend to think that we're, able, we're going to be able to get this patient through. And it's true. However, not always. There's another reason why, why Jack may have used, Jack, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, may have used this, um, this title, Statin Intolerance is Not a Myth. Maybe they were just doing a quick slam back on the um, European Atherosclerosis Society when the Atherosclerosis Society was saying, you know what, let's get away from the term uh, statin intolerance. Let's use SAMS. Whichever it is, uh, I think the facts are more important. <clears throat> Up to 30% of us get muscle symptoms with this uh, stuff, uh, but only about 1%, between 1% and 2% actually permanently cannot take statins. Here are some of the, and it's not just muscles, Here are here's just a small list of other conditions that can cause problems and an inability or intolerance to statins. Respiratory problems with interstitial lung disease, neurologic diseases, you can even get risk of suicide, you get a headache, aggressive behavior, de depressive symptoms, endocrine problems, gastrointestinal problems, constipation, diarrhea, obviously hepatic, liver problems, obviously kidney problems, you know, the myopathy, rhabdomyolysis, that can kill you. Uh, skin problems, even hair loss. Now, I've actually had, that one's unusual, and I didn't know that. I've actually had uh, patients complain to me that they thought they were losing their hair from the ACE inhibitors, which I'm not at all familiar with. But I haven't had anyone say he was losing his hair from statins. So <laughs> some interesting things. The bottom line is statin intolerance is not a myth, uh, but it's not, not as common as you might think. Thank you.